What you're seeing now was shot on a Fuji X-T3 mirrorless camera with a 55 to 200 mm lens and Robin with a Tamron 500 mm extreme telephoto lens. But this video is about how I get close to the action using GoPro cameras around our bird baths. Hi folks, today I'm going to show you how I've set up my cameras to record the images that I have over the last four videos in the bird baths. Bird bath 1, bird bath 2, cam 1, cam 2, which I've now named the GoPros that I'm using. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I hope you find this interesting guys and uh, without more ado, let's get to it. So these are the GoPro cameras I use, the GoPro 4 Silver and the GoPro Hero 7 Black. The GoPro 4 is set to 1080p and 50 frames per second and the GoPro 7 to 2.7k also at 50 frames per second. And the reason for this is that with the GoPro 7 I often need to crop in a bit closer uh, because that's tripod mounted whereas the GoPro 4 is often in the bath either pointing up at the sky or straight ahead or with a slight tilt to capture the action within the bird bath itself. The frame rates I use, uh, 50 frames per second, means that I can actually slow the action down somewhat. 200%, sometimes 400%. So um, that's an advantage, definitely. And I can pull out then quite sharp still frames as well. With the GoPro 7, the exposure is often set to minus half a stop. With the GoPro 4, ditto, unless it's pointing anywhere towards the sky or a brighter part of the subject. So I open it up maybe half a stop or even the whole stop. And it all depends on how bright the sky is. And that then enables me to get shots fairly accurately exposed with a bird beak straight into the lens, pretty much. Batteries, by the way, for both cameras are a mixture of GoPro and Smartree. Smartree can be supplied with chargers as well, and they're really good value. Audio is recorded on both cams, but much clearer on the GoPro 7 with its Saramonic mic and dead cat fitted. Ambient garden sounds are recorded on a Tascam DR05X and sometimes on an iPhone too, providing there's no wind of course. So with the GoPro 7 outside of its case, here's the battery. It also has the memory card in as well. And you need small hands, just as well I've got small hands really because <laughs> <laughs> These cards are so fiddly, aren't they? Micro SDs. So, as you can see, it's 2.7K, 50 frames per second, and in linear mode. The uh, GoPro 4, by the way, I do shoot at ultra wide because when it's in the bird bath, I want to catch as much of the uh, periphery as possible. And uh, I, I found by shooting linear with that camera that I was missing bits of the action, particularly when it's looking up at the sky and the bird's coming in. So, as you can see here, if I touch on there, uh, EV compensation, normally I shoot half a stop under, that's to avoid overexposure because as I say you can open up the shadows but you can't recapture what is not actually recorded, which is overexposed highlights. After some experimentation, I soon discovered what worked best regarding camera angles and concentrated on one bird bath at a time. The GoPro 4 got down and dirty and very wet at times, whilst GoPro 7 captured the overviews. And even on a tripod, it sometimes became splattered at bath time. I should have mentioned that exposure is set to auto on both cameras, and only varies with changing light conditions. And of course, when I make any plus or minus changes to exposure. I've been up with the birds. Here breaking a thin covering of ice. So for roughly two to three hours every morning and late afternoon, I'm up and down the garden, replacing SD cards and batteries.
then previewing the results. Yeah, this is the exciting part sometimes. <laughs> I'm capturing roughly 25 to 30 gigabyte on both cameras at a time, but I don't actually download. I just skim through the, the material. If I have anything that's worthwhile, I then back up to at least three discs. Usually though, I do have something worthwhile, but not in this case, only a wasp, sadly. <laughs> This really could be described as the lazy git's guide to wildlife photography, as I don't really have enough patience to be a real wildlife photographer. So that's another reason for using GoPros to do the work. That means I can relax and play wordscapes on the iPad. Yeah, result. But if all else fails, you'll at least get some half decent time lapses, and that's a bonus. Still, you make your own luck with patience, and the more you persist, the luckier you get. That's the mantra. Well, that's another mantra of mine. Oh well, that's it. It's pouring with rain today. Uh, we've had two weeks of beautiful sunshine, warm weather, being gorgeous, and now we're paying for it. This is April showers arriving on almost the last day of April. <laughs> Looking good tomorrow though. I've got to go and rescue my GoPro 4 in a moment, but I'll wait for these off a tad first, I think. There we go, folks. I hope you have enjoyed the uh, little tutorial on how I managed to capture birds in the bird bath. Uh, any camera, any any GoPro camera, any action camera will do, actually. Uh, the, the main benefit is that you're able to get up really close and capture the action, and that's the beauty of these cameras. And they're quite inconspicuous. I don't think it freaks the birds out too much, but uh, mount it up very close to the bird bath, put them in the bird bath, just experiment that's half the fun of it really I mean I've learned a tremendous lot about birds and their their habits certainly in the morning is the best time and, and later early even evening late afternoon early evening are the best times to capture them it seems uh, feed times I guess uh, coincide um, yeah uh, I've stopped using bread now so I am using sunflower seeds actually my lights just gone off <laughs>
<laughs> I'm coming closer to this light. Uh, yeah, which are working well, I think. Yeah, we've had some blackbirds already take uh, seeds I put out yesterday. It took about a day or so to get used to it. Anything, any changes you make, it seems they're a bit wary at first, you know. So, uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of uh, time for them to uh, get up to speed on that and feel safe. Um, but anyway, I'm moving away from bird baths for a little while and trying other things. And uh, there'll be future videos showing how I, how I get on with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the mantra is, by the way, don't forget, is shoot review edit shoot review edit shoot review edit repeat 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 and you'll need spare batteries spare memory cards so you can have the camera recording while you're looking at all the blank stuff that you've, you've caught so far <laughs> if you get one percent or half a percent fantastic sometimes you get lucky you might may find 10 15 percent of uh, action caught so yeah anyway Hope you enjoyed, folks. As I said before, um, please subscribe, ding the bell for notifications. There'll be a lot more coming. Uh, I think I'll be continuing with this bird wildlife garden photography theme for some while yet. <laughs> As all my other uh, plans are out the window, of course, and it's the same for most of us, I guess. So, enjoy. See you soon. Bye for now.